Welcome. So what I want to do is show you how to graph y equals negative x squared. And this is the famous negative x squared. So when we look at the vertex form, remember, we're going to be dealing with our transformations. And it's important to understand with this one that a is going to equal negative 1. Right? That's going, to be our ver that's going to be our constant that's multiplying by our x squared term. And it's really important to notice that when a equals negative 1 or any negative number, we're going to be able to see that there's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. So what we can do is we can show this by just you know remember whenever a is negative, there's, our graph is going to be reflected over the x-axis. Now, by looking at it's going to be reflected over the x-axis, what we can see is go back and look at our parent graph. Well, the parent graph y equals x squared, we know is going to look something like this. All right. So that's going to be our parent graph, y equals x squared. And when we're going to apply the transformations, especially a negative number, what it's going to do is this whole graph is going to be reflected over our x-axis. Now, I'll actually go through a couple terms. All right, and we don't need to always do a table of values when we see a, a negative reflection, but I want you guys to see exactly how y it's reflected over the x-axis. So we know that a 1, the axis of symmetry um, for our parent graph is going to be at 0. And if I reflect this graph directly over the x-axis, I'm also still going to have an axis of symmetry of 0. But let's see why exactly that's still going to remain the case. All right, so if I plug in 0, that means it's going to be y equals negative 0 squared. Now, notice how I make sure that when I'm doing this, I'm, squ I'm squaring my value, and then I'm multiplying by negative 1. And that's the main important thing that you need to understand when your a is negative. That's what you're multiplying by your x squared term. Therefore, every single one of my terms is going to be negative in difference with my uh, parent graph, it was always going up positive. But now what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by a negative number. So now my values are all going to be negative, which means they're going to be in the third and fourth quadrant. So if I picked two points to the left and then two points to the right, now we notice no matter what, what, whatever my number is, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. When I square it, it's always going to be positive. But then I'm always multiplying it by a negative number. So now it's going to be negative. All right, so I'm just going to kind of quickly do this because we've already done, how, we've already uh, shown how to make a graph by using a table of values. But what I'm going to do, whenever my a is going to be negative, now I'm simply going to do is I'm going to take this graph and I'm just going to reflect it over the x-axis. And remember, here's my x-axis, and then here's my y-axis. So what I'm going to do is just take this graph and reflect it over. So my vertex is going to remain the same because we notice that when we put in zero, we're still going to get zero. But now, instead of going left one, up one, now I'm going to go left one, down one. Instead of going right one, up one, I'm going to go right one, down one. And that's going to be the case for the next two as well. So now you can see my graph. And yeah, it's something like that, right? is going to go down in the negative direction. That's true for when all my values, when a equals negative, it's going to go downward. Now let's go and take a look at just a couple points. Uh, we know our vertex is the same as the parent graph, so that's going to be at 0, comma 0. We can say our axis of symmetry is the same as the parent graph, where you're going to have a line, dot a line, which is going to be x equals 0. And that's going to be the line that's going to uh, be symmetrical of our quadratic. Then we look at our y-intercept, and where that's where the graph crosses the y-intercept, or y-axis, I'm sorry. And that's at 0, comma 0. And then the x-intercept, that's where the graph crosses the x-axis. And you can see that the graph actually touches the x-axis at, again, 0, comma 0. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a quadratic using vertex form when you have a negative a. Thanks.